The concept of an afterlife is fascinating in and of itself. The idea that after we shuffle off this mortal coil, there will be something waiting for us on the other side. This concept has appeared in everything from books, to TV, to movies, to actually driving what people do within their day-to-day -day lives. People have long pondered what waits for us, and that fact can also give someone meaning within their life. Now, no one truly knows just what might be waiting for us. For those based in religion, the idea of an afterlife is simply a matter of belief and faith. But the true fact of the matter is, none of us truly know what is on the other side. While the general consensus is that there is usually a heaven and a hell, one of course being for those who lived life as a good person and one for those who lived life as a bad person, many religions differ on just what these two cosmic hotels might actually have going for them. Today, however, we will focus on the downside, the concept Today, however, we will focus on the downside, the concept of an eternity spent in a terrible place to justify the terrible acts that you took part in while you were alive. The basic concept is that hell is the place where you will be judged and endlessly tormented because you were a very bad person. We're not going to argue over the level of bad, this isn't a discussion of whether it's just as evil to purposely run someone over with your car as it is to talk during the movies, which it is, but let's just say for the sake of this video that you are a truly evil person who definitely deserves to be eternally tormented. Probably the most well-known version of hell is, of course, the Christian version, which is referred to merely as hell. The description of hell is taken straight from the New Testament and the Book of Revelation, and uses terms such as endless destruction, fiery torment, hellfire, and people being tormented by the beast or the fallen one in a lake of fire. The main idea of the Christian hell is that people will be judged for their living actions. They will be sent to be tormented for their crimes and be locked away from the everlasting love of God. The Christian view of hell has actually changed over the years, however. The original Old Testament and the early Jewish religion did not actually have a concept of hell at all. Some scholars also believe that the works of poets such as Dante Alighieri and his Divine Comedy, which saw a man pass through the nine layers of hell and purgatory, helped to shape the modern idea of what hell would be like. Currently, there is a doctrine known as Christian mortalism that believes that once you die, that's it. There is no afterlife waiting for us on the other side. In Islam, however, hell is referred to as Jahannam and is a place of punishment and torment. It is broken into seven different layers and is reserved for those who do not believe in God or have broken his commandments. Those who are considered the enemies of Islam are also sent to Jahannam after their deaths. Interestingly enough, the idea of hell is actually very similar in Judaism, Christianity, and Islamic religions. Yet, these are merely the modern concepts of the dark afterlife that awaits all those who do not follow a certain set of rules and live their lives as evil people. The ancient world, filled with many different religions that followed many gods, had their own different versions of hell. In ancient Greece, the dead always went to one place, Hades. While considered the underworld, this wasn't truly a bad thing. Within this underworld were places for many people, both who did good and bad. There was one place, however, that was reserved for the truly evil. The pits of Tartarus were the closest thing that the Greeks had to an actual hell. It was here that the Titans were imprisoned after their war with the gods. The pit was gloomy and dark, and being trapped there was reserved for those who had been judged the most harshly for their acts in life. The Egyptians believed that at the end of a person's life, they would stand before a tribunal that would judge them for their actions. Should the deceased be judged as not living their lives to the moral code set forth by the goddess Ma'at, who ruled over truth and goodness, they would be cast to Amit, who had the lovely name of the Devourer of the Dead. The person would be punished for their life by total annihilation. There was no eternal torment or lakes of fire. You and your soul would merely cease to exist. The ancient Sumerians believed that life would continue after death, in a grim and bleak place known as Kur. There, the deceased would live out their lives as if nothing had changed, yet their world was without light, and you ate nothing but dust. In the Sumerian afterlife, it did not matter whether you were good or bad. There was no cosmic scale to judge you. All souls ended up in Kur, so hopefully, you didn't ever die. Mikthlan is the Aztec version of the underworld, which was divided into nine levels. The soul would have to travel through the nine layers, facing many challenges along the way. It is said that this journey would take four years. Once they had arrived at the bottom layer, they would face Mictlan Tecutli, the Lord of Death. Located beneath the land and sea is Adlivan, the Inuit underworld. All souls would travel here to be purified. Once this happened, they would then be brought to the land of the moon for eternal rest. Zababa was the place of fear, where the souls of the evil who believed in the Mayan religion would find themselves after death. Zababa was ruled by 12 lords, who could be described as demons that rule over various domains of torture and punishment. And those are just some of our world's different views on the darker sides of the afterlife. Thank you so much for watching this Tales of Earth video. If you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe and let us know what you want next in the comments down below.